Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University, and today we're talking about security on the Ethereum blockchain. We're going to be talking about smart contract security, and I've got a few guests on the channel today from Quantstamp to uh, you know add to this conversation. So Quantstamp uh, has a big role in security, and they're going to explain you know what Quantstamp is and what Quantstamp does, and how they can help you understand why it's important to secure your decentralized applications on the Ethereum blockchain. So welcome guests. I've got uh, Casper and Don here from Quantstamp. Um, you want to uh, say hey to everybody? We'll, we'll start with Don and then we'll go to Casper. Hey everyone, my name is Don. Uh, I run business here at Quantstamp. Uh, we are a protocol to secure smart contracts. Uh, hi, uh, this is Casper. I'm a senior uh, research engineer. I work on uh, our protocol and I perform uh, security audits. Awesome. So we're excited to have uh, you know some people who are, are deep in the space today. We've got a security auditing expert here. So I'm excited to uh, ask you some questions about a security auditing uh, for smart contracts. So let's start with a pretty basic high level question for someone who who may not quite understand so why do we care about auditing in the first place why is security auditing so important yeah uh so security auditing uh you know like w was uh used way way before even you know blockchain was uh, was used was known uh, it is basically a set of practices that uh that people follow to ensure a good uh, quality of the software. Now, moving on to blockchain and cryptocurrency, we are talking about smart contracts that basically govern digi digital assets and value transfer. So you've got basically these programs uh, where security is very important because either people may lose their money or you know Ether or whatever the, the currency is, or the funds may get locked up in the contract forever, which means that they are unavailable. So again, this is a lost value. Yeah, and I'd also like to add to that. I think security is extremely important because you're not gonna use smart contracts if it isn't safe. And I think the biggest thing we keep on seeing in this space right now uh, are these hacks where you lose a lot of money. If we look at the parity wallet hack, if we look at the DAO hack, right? These things don't, instill confidence in people or developers to want to hop into blockchain and you know because we are in the blockchain space i think all of us agree that um smart contracts and blockchain can be very transformative um, but the only way you're going to get there is if people know for a hundred percent certainty that uh, money cannot be stolen out of your smart contract or, or frozen inside of it and so our mission is to have a world run on smart contracts and where we play into that is by securing smart contracts so people feel like they can use them uh, in everyday life. Right. And so, you know, it sounds like one of the big challenges here about, you know, uh, security auditing and why it's so vital, uh, you know, compared to other applications of software development is the immutability of the smart contracts, right? Correct. Um, that's extremely true because the way I look at it is, um, different than web 2.0 development or app development when you find a bug it's easy to push an update right uh, over the air or through the apple store um, with smart contracts um, they are immutable to your point so if you find a bug you find a vulnerability in your smart contract uh, once it's out there it's a little too late to change but i think Casper might have a more nuanced answer well, yeah, I think like what you said is correct, but another thing is that if we are talking about smart contracts on public blockchains, for example, Ethereum, that means that anybody can pretty much call any public method you expose uh, in your contract. So basically, what is different here is uh, perhaps the environment and some specifics about how the, how the blockchain runs and some specifics of the virtual machine. So there are multiple aspects that you need to understand to write safe code. Right. Yeah, it makes total sense. It's a very different uh, paradigm to have your code out there where anyone can access, just like you said. It's awesome. So 
what are some of the kinds of, you know, security breaches or disasters that we've kind of seen in the past? And like, you know, what's at stake here? So probably uh, the biggest one or the most prominent one was the Dell hack, um, where basically the uh, the attacker was able to drain Ether from the smart contract. Um, so this one is the most prominent, uh, but there are also some attacks that don't inspire confidence, although they have uh, no direct impact on the value. So for example, recently there was this uh, attack um, uh, badge, uh, called, named Badge Overflow. Basically, the attacker was able to create a lot of tokens out of thin air. Um, and you could, you could imagine what happens if the, uh, these tokens, they, uh, they are sent to the exchange and you can exchange them, right? So the exchange is basically they block tra tra de the deposits of these tokens and then ask uh, auditing companies to audit like all of their ERC-20 tokens to check whether this, uh, this bug exi exists or not. So again, although the value was not lost, people had problems with uh, transferring their tokens to, uh, to exchanges. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. So do you have any advice for people who are you know, developing smart contracts or you know, any kind of blockchain applications um, to where we can you know, learn from these mistakes? Like what are, some, what are some common maybe gotchas if you're writing a smart contract uh, that we should avoid? Um, well, so there are a lot of them. Of course, it depends on uh, on the on your target platform, whether I know is Ethereum or some uh, some other platform with smart contracts. Um, it definitely makes sense to learn about the environment. So again, the specifics of of the blockchain, how the virtual machine works, but also the specifics of the language. So again, for example, um, on Ethereum, people are using Solidity right now, but soon they may be sw switching to Viper, and these two languages, they provide a bit different guarantees. And apart from that, there are, there are, let's say, already standard practices or best practices that help you with writing good code, where you, uh, you know, that basically tell you to, to be defensive and provide very specific guidelines how you can achieve that. Uh, you know, like going through the guidelines here probably doesn't make much sense because uh, it is uh, a lot of a lot of points you need to go through. Uh, sure. But overall, I would say it definitely might it definitely makes sense to put a lot of effort into understanding the environment before you do some serious contract. Sure. Awesome. Well, thanks for that explanation. So, tell me a little bit about uh, you know Quantstamp. You know, what is QuantStamp trying to do? Um, you know, where are they trying to position themselves in the uh, in this in this space? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, you know we really see again. If you think about smart contracts in general um, today. Well, one could say the best use for smart contracts are probably token sales or um, you know early developers creating Hello World. Um, I think for us, though, we just want to really um, bring up the general uh, awareness of security and its its role in smart contracts. Um, I think, you know, as a follow up to what we just discussed in your previous question, um, I think that a lot of people don't think about security uh, first, uh, especially for developers. They think, "Hey, I just want the smart contract to work. I want to be able to maybe mint tokens." I want to be able to have, be able to accept either, and so we just want to be sure that um, everyone is extremely safe when they use it because of that immutability. Um, and so here at Quantstamp, we work with exchanges, we work with developers, we work with enterprises, we work with anybody who who wants to experiment in this world. Um, and and we want to be sure to tell these people, look, Solidity is a brand new language, and uh, it might look a lot like JavaScript or you know other uh, languages that um, developers have been used to in the past. But there's also a lot of gotchas, and and so we want to be a universal resource to people um, as they foray into it, and and think about ways we can really build a general standard or or build a set of guidelines that help everyone um, 
use more smart contracts. And so uh, I would say today um, we are busy building our protocol, uh, but also really building the awareness. Um, and we do that uh, in one example by working with a lot, a lot of YC companies. Um, so we also are Y Combinator backed, um, and we were part of the winter 2018 batch. And, you know, we were very privileged and, and grateful to be a part of it because we were actually the first token company to ever be accepted by YC. And so for us, we really think about how do we help YC think about this decentralized future? How do we help portfolio companies and past YC companies think about this decentralized future? Um, and we think that there are certainly strong network effects in doing so because maybe one of them will be the next Airbnb. Maybe one of them will be the next Uber. Um, and if that's the case, then we're going to really see um, impactful uses of smart contracts beyond token sales. And maybe that might mean that we might accelerate the adoption as well, where, you know, maybe I'm playing a video game. Uh, maybe I'm buying something online and I get the goods I want. I get the value that I expect. But on the back end, it's run on smart contracts. And the beauty is I might not ever even need to know about it. But the backbone of all of this is creating the security layer, similar to SSL um, or anything in a Web 2.0 paradigm, that um, can make people feel safe and know that um, they can use it more. Right. Yeah, so, if I may add to that, so we're still in very, very early days when it comes to adoption of um, you know, smart contracts. So, we as a company are very willing to put some of our effort into securing protocols. Because protocols, they manage uh, basically they manage a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of usage in the sense that if you create a protocol, then there will be a lot of perhaps other developers that will be using your libraries, or that will build some on top of it. So it is really vital to make sure that the protocols are safe. So, for example, we were uh, doing this audit for uh, interactive ICOs. We are looking into Plasma and so on. And uh, we believe this is going to be good for the whole ecosystem in the long term. So, you know, you mentioned uh, a little bit, uh, you know, SSL, right? And, uh, you know, something that, you know, provides a user with some feedback that the thing that they're using is trustworthy. Um, maybe tell me a little bit about how you think uh, that will, what that would look like in the future for people who are coming to use dApps, use smart contracts, or anything that's like blockchain enabled. Um, what do you think, uh, yeah, what, what do you think the role of that's going to be? Uh, well, I hope in the future, nobody will even know that they're using blockchain. I hope the usability will be improved. Uh, you know, like right now you're using like any Google service or I don't know, Facebook. And obviously there are a lot of technical details. There is a lot of machinery, machinery behind it, but you, you don't need to know that to, to be a happy user. And I hope that blockchain will be at the same point in, uh, in a few years. Yeah, that, and I agree with yeah. that. Uh, I agree with that a lot because if I think about the developer stack of something like Facebook, or something like Google search, right? There's a lot of machinery, a lot of data behind it. And I really see that the same thing with QuantStamp where, you know, if I look at microservices and uh, you know, web development or app development, you know, you might use Datadog, you might use Docker, you might use uh, Mesosphere or Kafka, right? But I then use have no idea that this is all built. And likewise, I think in this, um, I'm gonna call it blockchain stack of microservices, you know, a, a company might use Filecoin for storage. They might use Golem for compute. They might use us for QuantStamp for security. And, you know, the end users are never going to need to know that. But we want to create a developer's toolkit, if you will, that um, anyone can use from day one of when they start uh, developing smart contracts um, to when they really want to um, ship their product. Uh, and so... I think that's where the future is going, where you know there's going to be a lot of documentation that needs to be written. Um, there's going to be a lot of uh, a learning curve, maybe learning how to use Web3 or um, you know other different services. But I do think that the, the interest is there. And maybe this is a bit more of a philosophical uh, look at it, but whenever you have open source software where developers can build and there's um, users, uh, developers will come and they will build on it. And it will get better and better over time. And I'm very excited about this future because 
you know, if I think about developing on Facebook today, um, the value is very extractive where developers are locked into the platform. They can't move that data, right? Um, users feel like the data is being used to, to be sold ads to. Um, so I think in this open source world where, you know, we play a small part in, um, there's going to be a lot of development activity and we encourage anyone watching this video or Dab University or learning how to make smart contracts to keep foraying. Um, you know, there is a lot of uncertainty to say, what does that future look like? But the analogy I typically use is in 1994 when the internet was really, um, you know, in, the, in its infancy, did we know Facebook was going to exist? Did we know Uber was going to exist? No way. And so I think every time we think about these new technological shifts, um, there are always new interactions that are going to be created. And um, I think um, we're going to get to quicker adoption around that if, if it's secure and if there are things like quant stamp around. Very cool. Well, Don and Casper, uh, it's been very educational. I know that I've learned a lot today and uh, I've enjoyed hearing what you have to say about uh, you know, smart contract security and you know, blockchain security in general and what you all are doing at QuantStamp. Uh, before we kind of bring things to a close today, is there anything uh, that you all like for the people watching to know? So there's QuantStamp.com, obviously. Uh, we are also available on Twitter. We're on Reddit. Uh, we also have a Telegram channel. Um, I think for me, uh, the first thing I want to say is um, if you do make a smart contract, get it audited. Even if it's through a friend, even if, if it's through quantsamp.com, wherever you are, I think I want to be sure to practice safe hygiene uh, and secure hygiene when it comes to smart contracts. I think for a lot of people who are just starting out, it's like, no, I just need to publish it online. Um, and I really, really do think, though, that if we can create best practices around any time, you know, you're using Remix or or even pushing something to GitHub, that you will be able to to feel comfortable by using our documentation or somebody, even just manual line by line code review. Um, make sure your smart contract is safe. Um, I've seen too many times when people even just experimenting, um, even lose in, in Ether, right? And Ether is a really nice dinner. Um, so I want to be sure that uh, people are always thinking about security as they're developing. Um, yeah, actually, uh, I just want to add to this point. So actually, we receive uh, other requests. And it looks like, like my impression is that a lot of these requests like, are like an afterthought. You know, like you are ready with your contract. You want to ship it tomorrow. And hey, guys, can you audit that within a few hours? Um, but this is not how you build secure smart contracts. You have to start thinking about, like starting from day one and think about this process, right? Because it takes some time. It also requires some specification, documentation. Other people, they need to review. They need to understand your requirements. Perhaps they need to iterate um, over their requirements with you uh, to make sure that what you, have, what you wrote is exactly what you have in your smart contract. So really taking this approach, security, well, maybe not first, but, you know, security from, from the beginning, uh, it will pay off. Very cool. Well, again, uh, I've enjoyed having you both on the channel today. Um, everybody, be sure to check out QuantStamp for more information about, you know, smart contract security and their auditing services. Uh, I've really enjoyed talking to you guys today. It's been very educational, very informative. I learned a lot. I know everyone watching has too. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this where I'm talking to people who are you know, plugged in and you know, building and working in the blockchain and Ethereum ecosystem. And uh, I'm going to say goodbye to our guests today and everyone. Until next time, thanks for watching DAP University. Thanks for having us. Thank you.